I have 15 3DS consoles. Well, 10 of them are various 3DS models, and 5 are 2DS systems. They all fall under the 3DS umbrella. But why do I have so many? I know what you're thinking. He just wanted to get a system with two IPS displays. And yeah, there are people who buy these in hopes of getting IPS displays, but that's not my case at all. In fact, my main system has a top TN screen and a bottom IPS display. I bought most of these without knowing that there were different displays. So then why did I buy so many of them? It's not like I needed multiple systems. When I think of all 15, it does seem a little much to have so many, but when I break them down individually, it doesn't seem so odd. Each one has a story behind it. Here's my 3DS adventure. It's difficult to express how much the 3DS means to me. It's the Nintendo handheld that got me back into portable gaming. Like a lot of people, I had the original Game Boy back when it was a new thing. I skipped the Game Boy Color and went straight to the Game Boy Advance. And after this, I fell out of portable gaming. I completely missed the Game Boy Advance SP and all four DS's. I moved out of the country for a few years and I really didn't think about gaming during that time. When I moved back to the United States, I started to tiptoe my way back into gaming, but only a little. I picked up an Xbox 360 and played a few games here and there, but I still wasn't interested in the majority of what was going on in the gaming world. I eventually picked up a Wii, reluctantly, and I ended up loving it. And the only reason I did was because of Donkey Kong Country Returns. Because I liked that game and I was traveling for work often, I was interested to see if Nintendo had a current handheld system I could take with me. Luckily, there was and it had released only a few months earlier. I went down and bought this Fire Red 3DS. This model looks and feels extremely premium. I clearly remember calibrating the 3D for the first time and being blown away by what I was seeing. Glasses free 3D that looks quite impressive. As impressive as the 3D effect is, it's difficult to play with with the slider all the way up. You have to keep your head in the exact right position in order to get the effect to work correctly. If you go out of those boundaries, the image is doubled. I've always kept the 3D on while playing, but I put the slider much lower on the earlier 3DS models. This 3DS model feels high-end with a little heft to it. I know there are those who prefer a matte finish on their consoles, but I love this shiny little device. It's incredibly compact and easy to carry around. I especially like the red gradient and the sparkles in the paint. Other colors also feature this gradient finish. I also really like the metal, or what seems to be metal, on the back where the cartridge slot is located. It's these small touches that give the original 3DS so much character. Another issue some have with it is the top screen being a little floppy. It never really bothered me personally, but there are people who don't like this. I played the original 3DS a lot. It accompanied me on many flights and trips around the US. I was completely content with it, until Nintendo decided to make it bigger. When the 3DS XL released, I was really conflicted on getting one. I already had a 3DS and it worked perfectly fine but this new one was bigger. After sitting on it for a few weeks, I decided to get it. And it was great. It doesn't have the premium feel the original has, but it still feels great to play. The bigger console meant more to grip while playing and the displays are larger. The top screen isn't nearly as floppy as the original, so that issue was resolved. Though the greater issue was not. Your head has to remain still in a very small window for the 3D effect to work. Again, I just kept the slider a little lower and it looked great. This console became my primary 3DS for a few years. I used it frequently during the many trips I made across the US. But this is only one of two 3DS XLs that I've purchased. The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds is one of my favorite games ever made, and when I saw that Nintendo was releasing a special edition console based around it, I wanted it. But the problem was, I didn't have a need for it, and it was a little more expensive than the regularly priced 3DS systems. 
but as luck would have it, I was checking out the game section at a local store when I noticed that they had put them on clearance. They only had two left and I grabbed one. I haven't really used this console very heavily, though I have played a few games on it. The art design on it is absolutely amazing. It's one of the best looking of all 3DS systems. The gold interior and top exterior combined with the representation of Hyrule and Lowrule with the two Triforces is stunning. Nintendo even had to redesign the wording on the back to accommodate the Triforce art. This is one I'll hang on to forever. Nintendo really liked redesigning the 3DS. In 2015, they released the new 3DS XL. It held off for quite a while before jumping into the new models. It was only when a store was offering a trading credit that I ended up using it to get it. There are gaming items I've regretted getting rid of over the years. And one that tops that list is my red and black 3DS XL. I decided to trade it in for the credit towards the new 3DS XL. I've regretted this decision for a number of years. I kept that red 3DS XL in pristine condition and I hope whoever got it appreciated how much I took care of it. I used the black new 3DS XL for only a few months. The reason why is because Nintendo released a Fire Emblem Special Edition. The colors immediately caught my eye. It's the only 3DS that used contrasting button colors against a white interior. I sold my black new 3DS XL and used that money to buy this one. Though it was kind of difficult to get, I couldn't find one near me. Luckily there was one close to where my parents live and they were willing to grab it for me. I was happily surprised by the art on the top and bottom. It's not a flat paint job, it's a metallic look and I absolutely love it. This console became my main 3DS system and it's still my primary system today. And I think this is a good time to talk about the 3DS's screens. Some of them are made with TN screens and others are made with IPS displays. From what I've experienced, it's completely random on which kind you get. This one has both. Unfortunately, it's the opposite of what I would have liked. The top is a TN and the bottom is an IPS. Though to be fair, the top looks pretty good to me. It was when I bought this Fire Emblem Fates Edition that I realized how much I liked collecting these systems. I don't know what it is about them, but it's really fun to collect them. Shortly after the release of the Fire Emblem Fate Special Edition, Nintendo released a special edition of the new 3DS. The new 3DS was much more uncommon than the new 3DS XL in North America. It's also a smaller version of the new 3DS XL. This special edition was made for the Pokemon 20th anniversary. I wanted at least one version of the new 3DS, but it made it even better that this one was commemorating a Pokemon anniversary. I tried to get a hold of one in all the stores around me, but they were all gone. Luckily I found one at an online game store. It's the basic white version of the console, but what makes these smaller new 3DS's unique is the ability to swap the cover plates. This one came with a set of special cover plates with the Pokemon red and blue box art. But that's not the best part of my Pokemon 20th anniversary console. This one holds a secret. Both the top and the bottom displays are IPS. These displays really make 3DS games look great. When I got this 3DS, I was unaware of the differences in screen types. I didn't know that Nintendo wasn't making them all the same. I had been beating myself up for missing out on the Zelda 25th Anniversary and the Majora's Mask Edition 3DS's. But to my surprise, Nintendo wasn't done releasing Zelda Special Editions. The next 3DS I picked up was the Hyrule Edition. How could I pass up a new Zelda Special Edition? This one was brand new and in stock, so I jumped at the opportunity. The gold exterior with the Hylian crest looks quite nice in person, but other than that, it's really just a standard new 3DS XL. The interior is the typical matte black that was used on various other editions, but this one too has a secret that pushes it up to being one of the best 3DS's in my collection. Both the top and bottom screens are IPS displays. The viewing angles are fantastic on this console and really make the game shine when played on it. In 2016, Nintendo dropped a trailer showcasing a new art style for the new 3DS XL. It was a galaxy design and it really caught me off guard. It had nothing to do with any 3DS game, but it looked really interesting. I decided I wasn't going to get it because I already had so many 3DS systems. I went into town the week it came out and stopped by a game store. I only went in there to look for deals on DS and Wii games. While I was checking out, I asked if they had any of the new galaxy style 3DSs in stock. 
She said that they received their shipments that morning and that she had already bought one for herself. She asked if I wanted to see it, and of course I said yes. This 3DS looks way better in person than it does in pictures. I was immediately sold and I bought one right there. This thing looks amazing. The exterior galaxy image has a metallic shine to it. The interior bluish purple hue is unlike any other 3DS system. I was always disappointed that North America didn't get the blue colorway of the new 3DS XL. This one comes really close and in my opinion might even look better. That's probably because I've only ever handled this color in person. If I ever run across another one of these, I'll definitely pick it up. This isn't a special edition and is considered a basic color. It was widely available in North America, so there are probably many out there to be had. For the 2016 holiday season, Nintendo made two Mario editions of the new 3DS, one black and one white. These were part of a Black Friday sale that were sold at only $99, which is quite a deal for a new 3DS. Because I liked the feel and look of the Pokemon 20th Anniversary White Edition, I wanted the black version of this model. At the time, it was scarcer than the white new 3DS. These Mario editions came with special Mario cover plates. I decided I wanted one, so I got myself up and waited in line at the store at 4am to make sure I got one. I was about 3 people back for most of the wait. That is until the store was just about to open and a rush of people cut through the line and pushed their way into the store. I thought that kind of stuff was only made up for dramatic stories, but I was wrong. But these people weren't very bright, because when they got into the store, they all followed each other through the main walkways back to the electronics department. When I saw this, I bolted into a sprint through the clothes and was the first one in line to get the systems. I grabbed two black versions and left. In hindsight, I wish I would have grabbed a white one, but I'm not really beating myself up about it. I already have a white version. I ended up buying some Zelda cover plates from a Nintendo's website and swapped out the Mario ones. And I must say, this thing looks awesome with these cover plates. I wish the cover plates would have been more widely available in North America. I never saw them in any retail stores. I could only get them online. I had never really been interested in the original 2DS. It has a somewhat weird shape and it's quite big. It wasn't very practical for me to take around in my bag. All the other 3DSs fold up nicely to half their size. Well, I wasn't interested, that is until Nintendo decided to drop the price of the new one to $80. Even with the price drop, I wasn't really keen on the colors that were available. The only versions I was ever kind of interested in were the Crystal Editions, though at this time they weren't very common to see on store shelves. I also wasn't sure if those colors were part of the new pricing. Last I had checked, they were around $130. During a work trip to Minnesota, I had an inkling to check out the local stores to see if one of them had them in stock. I wasn't holding my breath as I hadn't seen them anywhere. As luck would have it, the first Target I stopped at had not one, but two crystal red 2DSs sitting in the case, and they were priced at $79.99. Being a gentleman, I grabbed one and left the other for someone else. After I cracked open the box and took a look at it in person, I immediately wanted the blue version, so I went online and found one for the same price. I had it waiting for me when I got home from my trip. These two consoles are awesome. They have a surprisingly comfortable feel. The translucent shells allow you to see the inner workings of the 2DS. The LED lights also shine through to make these consoles look great. It's a fun callback to the similar shells used on the Game Boys of old. And I'm glad Nintendo hasn't abandoned the idea of see-through shells. They use one for the Switch Pro Controller. Its form factor is also reminiscent of the non-foldable Game Boys of the past. For the 2017 Black Friday sale, Nintendo made a new Zelda Special Edition. This deal wasn't nearly as good as the previous new 3DS deal the year before. Because I was always mad at myself for not grabbing the other Zelda Special Editions, I went ahead and picked this one up as well. I had no trouble getting one. I didn't even line up early or anything. I just went in midday and saw one on the shelf. It's probably because it was priced at the MSRP of $79.99. Though this one even came with a digital copy of Ocarina of Time 3D. I haven't opened this one up yet, and I'm not sure why. There was one 3DS design I always wanted. Japan got a Super Famicom art design on the new 3DS XL. 
Once I saw that, I hoped Nintendo would make a Super Nintendo edition, and it seemed like it wasn't ever going to happen. When the Switch came out, I thought it was all over for that dream, but I was wrong. In late 2017, Nintendo did release the Super Nintendo version, and I bought it as soon as it went up for sale. This one is awesome. I love all the details on it. The gray, purple, and light purple colors are spot on. Even the 3D slider got the purple treatment. This is at the top of my list for best looking consoles. And if it's based around the Super Nintendo, it's an easy sell for me. In early 2018, I was wandering around in a store when I noticed that the new 2DS XL was being offered at a lower price. Instead of being at the normal $150, it was priced at $130. It's not a huge price difference, but I thought I would give it a try just to see how this console performed and felt. It has the basic feel of a 3DS XL, but it changed a few things. The biggest change was the removal of the 3D effect. In all honesty, I like the 3D enabled during gameplay, so this system wasn't aimed at me. There are many people out there that love this console, and I can see why. It was affordable and let you play all the games available on the 3DS. I personally just like the feel of the other 3DS consoles. After I had purchased the new 2DS XL, I thought I was finished buying 3DS consoles. I had already picked up a Switch and that was starting to consume all my gaming time, but Nintendo has a knack for getting me to spend my money. This time they came out with one of the absolute greatest special editions they've ever done for any of their consoles. In the summer of 2018, they released the Hylian Shield Special Edition New 2DS XL. Yes, after I just said that the new 2DS XL wasn't for me, I'm saying that one of my favorite special editions is the new 2DS XL. And if you haven't picked up on my pattern of money spending behavior, if there's a Zelda themed console, I'm most likely going to pick it up. I have yet to open it, but I will, but maybe not for a while. I've always said that opportunities to get gaming items always come around again and one of those opportunities presented itself in the fall of 2019. I was looking at my local classifieds and noticed that somebody had listed the Zelda 25th Anniversary Edition of the original 3DS, and all they wanted was $50 for it. I had to drive two hours to pick it up, but I was happy to do it. I had wanted this 3DS since the very beginning. I really like the gold accents on the buttons, 3D slider, and on the back. It's one that I'm happy to have in my possession. My most recent 3DS pickup happened right before the pandemic flared up. Someone locally listed a Cosmo Black original 3DS for $30. I couldn't pass it up for that much and it looks really nice. I also had an Aqua Blue 3DS, but I sold it to help me fund the purchase of my Hyrule Edition new 3DS XL. It's difficult to express how much the 3DS means to me. I've played it more than any other handheld I've ever owned. It's also the first handheld I've collected more than one while it was current. Nintendo had a great idea with the 3DS. They continually refined and expanded on that idea. Because of their innovations, they released six different models, all of which I bought when they were readily available on store shelves. Each one has its own design strengths that made me justify buying every new model. When I think of all 15 together, it does seem a little much to have so many. But when I break them down individually, it doesn't seem so odd. Each one has a story behind it, and I'm glad to have every single one of them.